do what you love and love what you do. Um, failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of it. So um, you, don't worry about being right all the time. No one expects you to be right when you're 21 years of age. You might think that, but that's your thoughts, but not but, but not their thoughts. Um, I'm much older now. Um, I've had plenty of life and work experiences and, and know a lot. I know a lot more than when I was 21. But um, I've still got so much to learn. You never stop learning and you don't know what you don't know. So, you know, keep an open mind and keep learning. Proximity is power. If you want to succeed, hang around with successful people and do whatever you, you, you need to do to get around the best people to do what you want to do. If, um, if you hang around with six idiots, you're going to be the sixth. Uh, five idiots, you're going to be the sixth. If you hang around five successful people, you're also going to be the sixth. So, um, yeah, choose your friends. Hey, welcome back. We're at Pat Masidi's best-selling author podcast with best-selling author Greg McLaughlin. And he was a co-author in a book with Mr. Pat Masidi called The Lightbulb Moment. And Greg's website is peakmasterycoaching.com. Now, Greg is an author, a life coach, and a consultant. And Greg is passionate about helping exactly you realize your potential through self-belief and helping you develop the right mindset and level of consciousness. Greg has gone through highs and lows. He's been a manager, an employer of hundreds of people, and he has just experienced this phenomenon, this transformation of changing your belief, your attitude, and your consciousness, so that way you can have this expanding effect on your life. And Greg is committed to inspiring you to adopt the principles and strategies to achieve happiness and well-being. So that's a tall order, but we'll make it work and we'll help some people. So Greg, glad to be speaking with you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Glad to be with you, Robert. Yeah. And so, you know, we introduced you a little bit. We, we did, hyped up the audience, but in your own words, what are you all about? What is your focus? What is your passion? Um, well, I've gone to, um, I guess I've gained many life experiences being a manager of people. Uh, from a relatively young age, where I was uh, supervisor of about about sixteen people through to a corporate experience and hostile. When I, when I say hostile, I talk about unionised environments and harmonious environments, only, and owning three businesses with employee levels up to two hundred people. Um, in each of those roles, I had to manage people, their nuances and their problems, and the problems they brought to work. I had the opportunity to be their confidant, their mentor, their advisor, and at times I had to feel like I've had to fulfill a role of brother and father and cousin and uncle and simply or simply be their friend. Um, I understand there are numerous reasons for people's behaviour, even though their behaviour may seem irrational, um, but getting to the root of the cause is, is often the solution. So I focus on the cause of the problem, not the action itself. When dealing Ooh, with I like that a lot. That's a good insight. And, you know, you, you think a lot about just the, the the emotional baggage that happens or the stress that we're all under. And sometimes I think to myself, man, like you think about some super high level politician, right? Someone leading a country. You think about whoever runs Coca-Cola or Disney. They must be under just so much stress. They must have to deal with so many people. And you figure like the the more power and responsibility you have, you're also expected to have a lot more emotional control and to to not act out and to be a responsible sane calm person especially when you, if you're dealing with hundreds of different people and so i like your your insight here right off the bat about getting to the root cause and so so what does that mean do you have like a good example where you, you dealt with someone and there was like this behavior but it really was about something else yeah um i'm just thinking back to um um one of one of our employees he just he, he wasn't performing he was he was tardy in his uh, attendance and um uh wasn't he wasn't his normal self and um you know people were, were mocking him and all that sort of thing and i thought I, I, I called him in and just said look you know what what what's the problem turned out his 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 uh, father was terminally ill but he didn't feel like there was anybody that would understand or or, um, or or would listen to him, and it, and it wasn't until I actually spoke with him, and you know, we we gave him time off, we can, can counsel him, um, and he actually thanked me for 
you know, just understanding and being there. And, and most of the time, you know, there are reasons for people's behaviour, but we, as a human race, we tend to be judgmental about it and not just take the time to sit down with the person and say, look, you know, how are you going? How are you feeling? Are you, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a saying in Australia, are you okay? <laughs> you know, so, so the initials are and you and okay, and it's, it's asking people if they're okay. It's, it's what you do in the workplace. It's what you do with your buddies. Um, I'm a member of a men's group that uh, we, we walk, we walk, it's called walk, walk, talk and support is what we do. And it's, it's, it's breaking down the barriers, putting people in a relaxed um, situation or a relaxed mindset where they feel safe enough, and, and that's the key word, safe enough to talk about their problems. Communication, what a concept. And what? you think about... <laughs> The like like friendships in the past that have crashed and burned, or I, I think make me think about like my relationship with my spouse. Like it used to not be that great, but we started just communicating. And when we communicated more frequently, both of us would say, like, hey, you know, I wanted to bring this up and I was afraid about how you'd react or what your response would be. But just because we're used to communicating more often, uh, yeah. there's not all the all this baggage that piles up. And so that's good for in all kinds of contexts, but in the workplace, especially just to keep the communication going. So that way you can know what's happening. And so why would people maybe not do this? Would people say, oh, well, uh, it's, it's awkward or I don't have the time to do it. Like, have you encountered any resistance from someone like already thinking of excuses not to do it? Um, look, this, this gets onto a totally different subject. I, I've studied, um, archetypal relationships where um, you look at there's four different archetypes of people there's the what we call the gorilla the fox the wolf and the sheep and each of those archetypes is if you can imagine a different operating system uh, an android versus an apple it's they're totally operating systems and, and one does not understand the other and each have, have their own little nuances as far as their their strengths and their weaknesses their their trigger points um, when they get angry, um, then their natural responses. So you, you get a sheep, for example, um, they, they, they worry about what people think of them uh, and they're, they're scared of upsetting people, um, you know, so they don't want to speak up. Whereas the opposite archetype, which is a wolf, will, will you know, they'll just straight between the eyes. <laughs> um, ask a question, wolves and wolves, wolves talking to wolves is, fantastic they, they understand each other direct questions no emotion just yep 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 get on with it whereas um you know you look at if i use that but the wolf and the sheep as an example the sheep will, is too scared to even say boo um so they're, they're worried about what people think about them um you know they, they worry about hurting people or saying something that might upset somebody else so it's just yeah our different operating systems and and um how we um how we re react to different situations. Which... And how do we navigate that? Because you're making me think of like, I, I used to go under the, when I was young, I had the false assumption that everyone thought like me and everyone acted like me. And then when someone would say something or act in a certain way, I would just make all kinds of assumptions. And now in, in, in you know, more, more adult years, I'm thinking, well, sometimes someone just wants me to listen to them or sometimes someone doesn't want to talk about their problems and i have to kind of you know ask you if that's okay and i'm i've made it a, a point to be more careful and to more just ask someone what they want as opposed to just like telling them things and so do you have any insights as far as this kind of empathy or the the communication gap if you're dealing with one of these other three archetypes of, of the four how do you just behave in the right way and how do you make sure that you don't make a problem worse um i think there's a saying um walk a mile in another person's shoes so put yourself in someone else's shoes um uh, I, I think in this world of the, the world we're in at the moment it's all about success and results and and um and not about people so you know it's it's the world we live in, well, there's lots of, there's like lots of things, I suppose. Uh, marketing makes people want to buy. They want people to have a certain look. They want people to be a certain way. Um, um, yeah, it's all about 
success first, people second. So you need to take that step back and put yourself in the other person's shoes. Um, think about, you know, just put, make, make a safe and a relaxed environment for them for them to talk. Just ask a couple of, um, you know, leading questions, you know, open, um, not, open-ended questions, not yes, no questions. I, I've, I've done um, suicide count, um, lifeline in Australia here. Um, there's a suicide um, helpline. Uh, so I've learned to put people at ease, um, you know, get, get on common ground with them, empathise, empathise with them to get them to talk. I like that a lot. Get them to talk, empathize, be a curious person, ask leading questions. And I'm always looking to develop those people skills, the small talk skills. And many times it's hard to break that barrier, right? If, if someone's not used to speaking with you, they're kind of closed off. And so do you have any of your favorite sort of icebreakers? Like, are you the kind of person that asks about weather, hobbies, family? Like, what's a good way just to get the conversation flowing? I think it's 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 be relaxed, be genuine. Um, yeah, I, I I think ask people type questions, not not you know, like okay, you know, with a heap of businessmen, it's usually about business. But when we're we're talking about you know people, uh, it's you know, what family do you have? You know, you have family. Um, you know, how many kids have you got? Or you know, what what do you do for hobbies? Uh, it's it's asking questions that make. That are about them, about them. Because who do, who's the, who's the most favourite person we like talking about? It's ourselves. ourselves. Yeah. So you know, so ask questions to get them talking about themselves, and we can talk all day about ourselves if we really want to, with, with the right questions. So yeah, it's 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 humanising and it's 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 you know, getting on a, a an empathetic level with them, people. I like it. So figure out about them, about their family, about their hobbies, about their values, and just get them to open up about that because every person loves talking about themselves. It's, it's human right. nature. And so this is uh, some good, just, it seems obvious at first, but it's so obvious that a lot of people don't do it, right? Like you no. said, a lot of people are focused on the success, the productivity, the business. So even though it seems simple and fundamental, this is a, a very important life lesson. And it's always helpful just to think back and you think about, oh man, when I was 20, when I was 30, if only I'd done this or done that. So with that kind of a thought exercise, if when you think back to younger Mr. Greg McLaughlin, what advice would you give to your younger self? Uh, well, it's, it, um, do what you love and love what you do. Um, fire is not the opposite of success. It's part of it. So, um, don't worry about being right all the time. No one expects you to be right when you're 21 years of age. You might think that, but that's your thoughts, but not but but not their thoughts. Um, I'm much older now. Um, I've had plenty of life and work experiences, and, and know a lot. I know a lot more than when I was 21. But um, I've still got so much to learn. You never stop learning, and you don't know what you don't know. So you know, keep an open mind and keep learning. Proximity is power. If you want to succeed, hang around with successful people and do whatever you, you you need to do to get around the best people to do what you want to do. If um, if you hang around with six idiots, you're going to be the sixth. Uh, five idiots, you're going to be the sixth. If you hang around with five successful people, you're also going to be the sixth. So, um, yeah, choose your friends. In choose the programming world, we call that garbage in, garbage out, right? If you, It's like if you just... Uh, watch a, a lot of reality TV or you read a lot of romance novels or you eat only candy and fast food, then what, what do you think will happen? And it seems like the same is true as far as your friends, your people, your communication. And so that's Perfect. this is all very good advice. And it seems to all be centered around your advice of be a good people person, care about people. The other thing is um, a, a lot of people uh, think they're not worthy or think they're not good enough, but you, you're good enough just as you are. Forget about the good opinions of other people and keeping people happy. The first person you've got to make happy is yourself and the rest will follow. You'll find if you're happy, you send off a demeanor and an aura and everything else that you attract You attract the right people in, in any case. So you don't worry about the good opinion of other people because what they think of you is none of your business. What you think of them is none of their business. It's um, 
So, so yeah, forget about the good of people, uh, good opinion of other people. Get a healthy work life balance, work life balance, and don't don't chase money just for the sake of it. There's other things in life other than money. I mean, some some people are so unhappy in life that all they've got is money. <laughs> so, so there's you build wealth in other ways, in relationships, in feeling good, in being healthy, and, and whatnot. Um, you know. Of course, money's important and, you know, we need to save money. You know, we need to make money to buy a car, buy a house, do an investment. But, but you know, that's okay as a primary goal temporarily. Get, achieve, get what you want. But, uh, but after that, once, you, once you've got your, your bits and pieces, try and get back to that healthy, healthy balance. So worth I like it. That m- money is just one factor of many. Yeah, exactly. And and that's also great, this idea of the boundaries, right? Of the, well, your opinions of others, they don't need to know, and their opinion of you, that's also none of your business. It really simplifies things. And so as far as a lot of the the wholesomeness of life and like living a, a fulfilled, good life, have you struggled with any of this over the years? Or there, is there a particular aspect, like as far as the, the people or the relationships or the money, like where have you really struggled in your own personal growth? Um, I think there is probably a stage where I worry about what other people thought. Um, I used to be embarrassed about my own success. Um, you know, I didn't want to flaunt. You know, I, I drove um, modest cars. I didn't go out and buy, you know, sporty, <laughs> sporty cars or anything. So there was a, a time there where I felt, um, um, yeah, I, I did worry about the opinion of other people, even when I was successful. So, uh, um, and I got to a point, um, yeah, no, it was just, it, it's just that, it was that. And then always everything I did, you know, it was always to try and make a bit, 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 bit more money. And that was always at the expense of something, um, health, um, uh, you know, stress. Um, and in the end, um, I had a, I had a business that had to be liquidated and ended up bankrupt because I, you know, in, in focusing on one thing, I'd forgotten about everything else around me. And what should we do instead? Because we, you, there's the worry of, well, if I, if I'm juggling too much, then I'm, I'm kind of only putting 20% into each bucket. So how do you reconcile this idea of, well, I want all these pillars of my life to be great, but I also want to get some traction in, in other areas. So how do you reconcile those two ideas? Well, you need to have a plan and, and focus, you know, you know um, energy goes, you know, it's an old Tony Robbins saying, energy, energy um, flows where focus goes. So you, you need to have, have focus and have the strength to, to um, you know, go r- run with the tide, you know. So sometimes things don't go your way, but you just, just go, go with the tide because the tide will always come back. So it's a matter of having a, a clear focus and a goal and and just focusing on that goal and ignoring all the peripheral stuff there'll always be people who want to pull you down there'll always be people who say you can't do it you won't do it you know most of the time that'll be your family as well <laughs> um, sure. you know it's it's a, it's a matter of you know staying focused wonderful so you're saying we should have a plan we should have a goal that way when we're on our way to that goal when there's all these other distractions we can choose what's important to me what's serving me in that goal versus what's just trying to steal my time and my attention and take me away from where i want to go and you always hear these shocking scary statistics about the super low percentages of people who like don't even have goals and it's like man if just you sat down and figured out where you want to be in a few years and in one year and five years that that alone would get you ahead of a lot of people and especially when people get to this kind of midlife age that's really scary right 40s 50s when you're wondering okay well how much time do i have left what does all mean what am i working towards and so what was it like for you getting towards that midlife point and like what do you see as far as people struggling Look, I'll cover, I'll cover something here. I, I think there's seven waves in a person's lifetime. Each of those waves is approximately a decade, and each decade is, has a different significance. So when you're in your 20s, you start ask yourself, what am I going to do with my life? In your 30s, you're usually trying to do it well, whatever it is you're trying to do. In your 40s is, what am I doing with my life? Because you get to a point. 
50s, what am I able to do? In your 60s, what shall I do now? 70s is about doing and being, and the late 70s and beyond, you say to yourself, what have I done with my life? So from your 40s onwards, you tend to evaluate whether or not you're satisfied. If you look back on the hard work done through your 30s and you know, achieve your goals, you might ask whether or not it's worth it. Um, is this how I want to spend the rest of my life? So what am I going to do with my life? You might find yourself, you might, might find you no longer have anything to prove to anybody but yourself. Uh, you reflect more on what you want your life to mean rather than what what people you know, what people judge you for what you've done and what you've achieved. Um, I think once you're in your forties, you're halfway through your life, or thereabouts, depending on your health, and only a certain amount of time to, left to do what you want to do. Uh, you may feel the best of your life, best of years are behind you, um, and you've wasted time on activities and relationships that don't serve you very well at all. So um, if you feel like this, it's important to still maintain relationships. Don't cut yourself off because it's time for you to change and the way you live and make choices to give your life more meaning. So um, I got to, when I got to a certain age, I woke up one morning, I had a, I've got a fantastic family, I had a great business, and I woke up one day and thought, what's this all about? Greg wasn't. Greg woke up one day and Greg wasn't happy. I've analysed it and I and and basically what I'd found was that I wasn't fulfilled. I I'd, I'd run. I built businesses. I ran businesses and and but the, the problem is that's that's all I had in my life. I didn't have any hobbies. I had plenty of interests. You know, I'd I'd fly off somewhere overseas and watch a Formula One race or you know something like that. But that you know, that was, I guess, a little bit of. Um, instant gratification i suppose um but i i didn't have any hobbies i didn't have any interests you know i'd always thought about going and playing the guitar but i, I bought a guitar but i sat in the corner for 15 years um so it's 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 a matter of when you when you move forward um you, you know you, you've, you've thought about what you've done but what is it that's going to make you happy for the rest of your life um, you know, um, you can make choices and you can make choices um, on health. Um, I, I think uh, I think one of the important things is get, is getting yourself a hobby and some interests. Maybe even join a men's group. Uh, men's group. The men's groups these days have lots of act activities. So they they do camping. They do you know workshop skills. So you know even if it's just there to be part of a congregation of blokes just to talk talk crap for. <laughs> half an hour or so but uh you know that sometimes that gives you some fulfillment you know people are listening people are got, you know you're not usually not the only one with a problem most of the time we have a problem we think we're the only one we think we're alone but, but generally you'll find there's 10 other people who've got exactly the same problem and talking it out problem shared is a problem halved and and you know you end up with a you know, camaraderie a bond you end up you might end up doing things you know camping going on trips you know whatever it might be. You might take up hiking. You might, you know, there's, there's plenty of hobbies that, um, that you can do. But the other important thing is, um, um, if you, particularly if you haven't led a healthy life, is uh, it's not going to get any better as you age. So you really need to understand health and well-being. You know, do some exercise and physical fitness. It doesn't mean to go down to the gym and pushing 200 kilos and doing dead weights and stuff like that. could just be simply walking every day, riding a bike. Doing light exercise at the gym, sleep and rest is important as um, for your well-being. Relaxation, nutrition, monitoring your health. There's plenty of health monitoring um, devices out there nowadays. Um, there's one in particular I've got called Heart Heart Math, and it's something that just clips to your ear and it, um, it measures your heart rate and and uh, it measures the coherence between your your mind and your body. Um, it tells you whether you're calm, whether your your mind's going all over the place. Um, and there's plenty of devices out there nowadays to, to you know, there's sugar, um, there's constant glucose monitors to check your blood sugar that you can just clip on your arm for a couple of weeks and monitor what you eat and how, how you eat about. So there's there's no excuses for not living a, a longer and healthy life. Avoid unhealthy uh, unhealthy activities. Strike up good relationships. It's important to have a social circle as you get older. Um, you know, 
you might think you want to be a hermit and sit in your little cabin somewhere on a 200 acre block or something, but um, that's not healthy for your mind. You, you need that social interaction with people. And use your time and energy efficiently as you get older. Yeah. This is all great advice. And it's good to have a lot of this awareness or even just reminders, right? Like there's all always these devices and there's new ones being invented every day just to monitor different things. And they're all, it's not like uh, having a big old bulky belt like it used to be. You can just yeah. have some little device and yeah. get some data and figure these things out. And it just, it seems for, in our conversation to always be circling back to this idea of don't be alone and have some yeah. friends, even though it seems silly, it seems useless, just like how the hobby seems silly, seems useless in the yeah. moment. But what's the alternative to be lonely, to be yeah. depressed, to wonder what's going on with your life? So the lesson I'm getting from you is all of these these little minor things are really important for us to have. And especially that awareness about the men's group, which are all over. And if you say, well, I don't know what hobby I want. Well, you join this men's group and you can try out different things and strike up these friendships and get this perspective and have these conversations and have the, the feel, the, the kind of the feeling good feeling of you're helping others. They're helping you. You're in it together. You're not going in alone. And these are the things that we need to focus on because as we've kind of said in our conversation, there's more information and more technology and more tools than ever before. But in a lot of ways with the social media and all that, a lot of us are isolated more than ever before if we're not careful. So we have to maybe deliberately make this conscious effort. And as you been, have been saying, there's the different phases in your life when you're younger you can try out different things and there's kind of some degree of randomness and some ability to make the mistakes. But as you get older, it's like, okay, what does it mean based on what I've tried with different yeah. careers, professions, activities, friends, relationships. Now, what do I want moving forward? Now I have the data to make these better informed decisions. And so this is just great to think about and touch on some of these elements of life improvement and how does this relate to you? If someone says, man, like listening to Greg, I've got some really cool ideas and things I can take action on, but uh, listening to a podcast only gives you a start, right? And going to someone's website or checking out what, more of their material or contacting for coaching, that's where we really want to be. So what yeah. is your function or your role in helping people kind of get to this peak mastery and getting to the fulfillment? Look, I've lived a few decades myself, and as I pointed out, there's, there's certain decades in, in your life which are which are significant for different things. So, um, the, the book I'm writing at the moment is is for around hen, men, men's health and well-being between the ages of 25 and 65. Uh, I've lived um, a few of those decades and and uh, experienced certain problems um, in life, and with certainly not on my own, but with the help of other people, I've, I've, I've gone through those problems. Sometimes you need the experience of problems to appreciate things, but, but uh, a, lot, a lot of times these problems can, avoid, can be avoided or, yes, we, we've got the problem, but there are certain fixes for those problems, and whether that be um, you know counselling, whether that be just talking about it, whether it be meditation, getting back to what we were talking about before about not being alone. And, I think it's it's important to have me time uh, and, and use that me time wisely. I I meditate for an hour a day um, just to settle the mind down um, and uh, you know think about it's, it's all different sorts of ideas uh, fall in your mind when, when you meditate. But um, a lot of the things that I discuss is just some of the some of the problems that I've had and and or some of my friends and people around cohorts have had and what we've done to fix them very cool and, and that's a, a helpful thing to have right is to yeah. live from your life experience yeah it can be finance it can be you know people problems it can be problem with kids it can be just you know what am i doing with my life you know like i woke up one day when i was 50 and just said is this all there is you know now i've been i've been bankrupt but i'm still here and i've never been happier because I've found that different aspects of life to focus on rather than just money. Now, money's very important. cool, very and, inspiring. And in the consultancy business I, I'm, I'm, I'm in at the moment and coaching business, I'm, I'm, I'm making a, enough, to, enough to make me happy, myself and my wife happy. So 
Nice. You, can, so you, you, you figured a lot of this out. And you can yeah. lose everything and still be happy. That that's a cool thing to think about. You can lose everything and still be happy. And so as far as people getting help from you, is there uh some next steps? Is there a website or contact information where someone can reach out? Yeah, well, you mentioned the website at the start. It's just being uh, re-engineered at the moment, so it should be finished in the next uh, week or so. Um, so you can contact me through via the website, um, which should be up and running or, or be refurbished um, in the next uh, next few days to a week. Okay, and that website is peakmasterycoaching.com. And when someone goes to that website, once it's refurbished, what will they find there? Uh, they'll find um, different... Um, subject so different subject matter in there um probably a few uh ask, ask a few questions get a few answers uh access to um uh, blogs and some material that um that, that may help them uh, yeah a few different um, aspects which are just being um, engineered at the moment Wonderful. So get, getting some of those answers to life's important questions, which sometimes takes us a while to figure out, or we need some outside help from someone such as you just to get get our head on straight, just to get a better perspective on things. And so as people are going to peakmasterycoaching.com, I want to make sure before we end things here, Greg, that we get one final impactful quote or lesson from you. So does anything come to mind as far as helping us out, sending us on our way, a quote or lesson? Look, we all need people around us to, to help and to guide us, but generally we're all looking for outer world solutions to fix our problems or issues. And most issues can be solved by looking inside ourselves and provide our own inner world solutions. So listen to your inner voice and instincts over the experts. You know you, just listen to it and and go with the flow. That is nice. This listen, the answer is within you. And the next logical step for us to take as far as figuring these things out is go to peakmasterycoaching.com. And we've been speaking with Greg McLaughlin, co-author with Pat Masidi, The Lightbulb Moment. Wonderful speaking with you, Greg. Thank you. I'm here to guide people through it. So, you know, the inner, the inner world, um, it's inner, you, you fix yourself through the inner world, but I'm here to guide you through that inner world. Thank you.